All right, you guys ready? You guys ready? I don't think you're ready. Oh look, another is Oh my god, it's my hand. Hello. Hello. The hands. There they are. Didn't realize Twitch allowed IRL guns now? Yes, it does. I very carefully checked the uh, TOS, and they said that they have no problem. You can even stream you on a firing range. They don't particularly care about that. Um, as long as you're not doing anything unsafe. Which, as you can see, there is no ammo, so we are safe. How many guns are in my collection? A lot. There are enough guns in my collection that I don't remember how many there are. And it actually takes me a second to think about it. Maybe we'll need that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll need the TW25. We'll need those. Um, so this one, the one I'm cleaning right now, you know, maybe I should put it- Oh, you know what? That might be smart. Hang on, I have an idea. I have an idea. We're gonna do something fun. Guys, check this out. You're gonna like this. You're gonna like this. You guys, you guys don't like this. This is fun. This way I don't have to keep telling you guys what gun it is over and over again. Ooh. I'm smart. I'm very smart. Where will this go? We'll put it up here. We'll put it up there. That's a good spot for it. I am very smart. And then it'll go, you know what, it'll go right next to the, the sub goal, I guess. Why not? Perfect. This music is very classy, you're right. Normally when I clean guns, I do uh, bottom corner looks better. Normally when I clean guns, I just watch other YouTube videos. I don't know, how about down there? How about that? Top is better. I can we see the P90? Maybe. Maybe we'll get to the P90. Thank you very much for the bits, Freedom Incorporated. You know what? I'll tell you what. You gave me, you gave me a hundred bits. I'll show you the P90. I'll show you the P90 because you gave me a hundred bits. You're just lucky that I have it right here. Top is better, text covers the hands at the bottom of the screen. Oh, okay. All right. We'll put it right up there. If I can get it to stop trying to snap the things. Perfect. All right. You guys want to see the P90? I'll show you the P90. Ugh. Also, very thank you very much, Thanos93, for the bits. Behold, P90. Oh, hang on. Let me... Let me orient it correctly for you guys. P90. See? Look at that. The legend is true. I have a P90. You guys want to know, you want to know something cool about the P90. So I have this optic for it. And this is the original optic that came with a P90. Um, what came with this gun is... Uh, it's originally a rail that sticks up kind of high. You look through the center of the rail for the backup iron sights, which is silly because the P90 has backup iron sights here. I'm having a hard time pointing this out. There we go. Here and here is where the backup iron sights are on the P90. Thank you very much for the bits, Thanos. I really appreciate it. I am in Stargate 1. Um, okay, so... What it originally comes with is this big rail that extends from, like, here, uh, right about here to right about the... Uh, there, right? And yes, it has two backup iron sights on it. There and there, because this gun is ambidextrous, so you can shoot it from either shoulder. 
So they put the iron sights on, on both sides. All of the controls on this gun are completely ambidextrous. Charging handle here. Charging handle here. The safety lever is right there. And magazine release can be accessed from either side of the gun. So you have to put the iron sights on both sides of the gun. Change the current gun. Ah, shoot. All right, I will, we'll put this away in just a second. Anyway, I have the original optic for it. I can't even believe I found the original optic for it because now P90s don't come with this optic anymore. Uh, they come with just a rail and they expect you to put your own optic on it. This optic sells for like $500. It's stupid and it's not a good optic by any means. It's pretty terrible. Uh, but I had to put it on there because it's a fucking vibe. I mean, look at this. That's just a vibe right there, you know? Anyway, P90. Maybe we'll get to cleaning that later tonight. We'll see. I love that it fits in there. Thank you very much for the 1,000 bits, the Elite Gamer. Do we still have music? Okay, yeah, we do. No, Treasure Panda is taking the night off tonight. He's you out doing, subscriber. doing New Year's things and getting uh, getting all kinds of trash for New Year's. Thank you very much, Echo AKM, for the Prime subscription. I really appreciate it. Um, none of these are... Oh, wait, no, we need 9 mil because we're doing the 32. The 22 is later. You know, I actually don't know if this Jag will fit... Oh, yeah, that's not going to work. Okay. Don't want to use that. We'll keep these. And we need to clean this Beretta. Treasure Panda's probably out getting drunk for New Year's. You know, he doesn't actually drink that much, surprisingly. Where's my rag? Is it kind of content you want to support? Hell yeah, man. You get to watch me clean guns? We got it. Yes, there, you know, actually, there's a raccoon right there. So there's one here. And there's a tanuki. The tanuki is a uh, felted tanuki. This is, yes, this is now a just chatting for gun people. Thank you very much for the bits, Kyle Silver. But yeah, so there's a tanuki right there. He's a felted tanuki that my wife got me for Christmas. Christmas? Was it my birthday? Oh man, I can't remember. Oh, I feel bad, I can't remember now. Um, and then we also have this goose over here. Yeah, I have like a car blinker noise as my, um, my alert. Uh, I actually really like having that one. I got that one from a sound pack of sound effects from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Am I going to clean a Barrett tonight? I actually don't own a Barrett, you know, surprisingly. Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. I'm glad that you are enjoying it. And thank you, Alpharius, for the 53 bits. I really appreciate it, man. I'm going to have to tighten these grips up. They're starting to come loose. Wow, not only, you know, man, not only are you guys, not only are you guys getting to see gun cleaning, you're also going to get to see gun maintenance. Isn't that a treat? How was my Christmas slash holiday? Pretty good. I got fun stuff for Christmas. I got lots of really cool stuff. I don't know if that is going to be thin enough. Thank you very much, Crasher, for the 100 bits. That is, the spy, the goose is a spy camera. You're right. Okay, yeah, that is actually thin enough. Great. And thank you very much, Kyle Silver, for the 50 bits. I really appreciate it. So a sign for the bathroom. It's a raccoon offering up a roll of toilet paper saying, Your butt napkins, uh, Are guns allowed on Twitch? They are, surprisingly. You're just... Honestly? I'm just as surprised as you are. Wait a minute. 
Uh, was this bit actually not big enough? Small enough? Am I gonna have to get another multi-tool? Yeah, we might have to get another multi-tool. I don't think that bit is actually thin enough. Why is this one not thin enough? All right, hang on. I gotta find it. I gotta find my bit driver set now. That's annoying. Oh my god, that's a lot of bits. Thank you so much, Kilroy. Holy shit. 1,500 and... Good lord. 1,500 bits from Kilroy. Thank you so much, man. Show us Piper after this gun is clean, please. Ah, uh, I can try, but I don't think Piper will fit. I can, I can try to show you guys Piper, but I honestly don't know if she'll fit on screen. And thank you very much, Jcod, for the 500 bits. I really appreciate it. Uh, I just want to say it's so cool seeing my favorite YouTuber have a similar story to how they met their wife. I met wife, my wife playing Final Fantasy 14, her living in Australia, and me living in the U.S. Well, congratulations, man. I'm glad that worked out well for you. All right. Emo only chat, a beep boop. Uh, when someone said asked that they could see the Metal Gear gun, what did they mean by that? Did you mean the P90? I because I just showed that a minute ago. Maybe I can show. Oh, you probably mean the Mark 23 SOCOM. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, you know what? We'll, we will we will get to the Mark 23 SOCOM. That is actually one of the guns that I need to clean. I just fired a bunch of guns suppressed. Um, recently. And I need to clean them because firing guns with a suppressor on them, I don't know if you know this, makes them really dirty. So I kind of need to, uh, I kind of need to clean them all off after, after all of that. Oh look, another resubscriber. Thank you very much, Aloha Snack Bar, for the three-month subscription. I really appreciate it, man. What's really fun, to, funny to me, about the these tiny like pocket pistols from Beretta, is that on most. On most other semi-automatic pistols, your recoil spring is gonna be located, well, we'll do this, located here underneath the barrel. But because of how small this gun is, there's really not a whole lot of space underneath the barrel. You don't really have room for a recoil spring under there. Um, and that's usually where most people are gonna put it because that's kind of just a wasted space area on most guns. You're not really, there's nothing really goes under there. So because there was nowhere to put it on the bread and they're trying to keep it as small as possible, this is the recoil spring, or your main spring. It actually indexes off of right there on the slide. So here, we'll do that. So, when it fires, you can actually see those two little arms move backwards, which is really goofy. It's just goofy that that's, like, where they put the recoil spring. It's strange to me. Anyway. This is funny music for gun cleaning. Hee <laughs> hee. Funny gun clean music. I cannot actually see that very well. What's... There we go. That's better. There's a lot of junk built up in there. Oh, that's... Huh. I have not taken this gun apart enough. I did not notice that was a whole, like, coiled spring around there. Alright, cool. <sighs> ba, 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 ba. 
Yeah, usually when I clean guns, I just watch random YouTube videos. So this is the first time that I've done this on stream. And I have a lot of people viewing, which is kind of insane. It is lo-fi gun cleaning. Greetings, daggers. Daggers is a VIP. Tomcat. There you go. Tomcat! What's interesting to me... Thank you very much for the Bits Crasher. This is how the old-timey gunsmiths cleaned guns. They just blasted it to- they just blasted Beethoven. Beethoven was the OG. Um... What's kind of goofy to me about the Beretta, like, pocket pistols... Is, uh... There's, there's like two, well, there's three. There's three small Beretta pocket pistols, right? There's the Beretta 3032, which is this one. Beretta 3032 Tomcat is the name for it. And then there's the Beretta 21A. Is it 21A? Yeah. Beretta 21A, which is the Bobcat. But if you know anything about cats... A bobcat is a little bit bigger than a tomcat. <laughs> Beep boop. Oh yeah, guy, by the way guys, that's how I do emote only chat. I just have a button right there that I just press, and then I have another button next to it that's a timer. Anyway, if you know anything about cats, bobcat's a little bit bigger than a tomcat. And the thing that's... Uh, the thing that's kind of goofy to me about that is that the Tomcat, I'm sorry, Tomcat is in 32 ACP, and then the Bobcat is in 22 Long Rifle. So the one that's named after the bigger cat is in a smaller caliber, which is really weird. Like, why, why isn't, why isn't this one the Tomcat, because it's in 22, and this one the Bobcat, because it's in 32? It's so dumb! I don't understand it. Anyway, whatever. Casually throws Beretta across room. Okay. Continuing to clean. Tomcat fights a Jerry Mouse. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thanos93. I really appreciate the bits. You're right. You're right, though. You're right. You're right, though. This music is a little bit too dramatic, I think. Do I need to change the music? Italian gun manufacturers aren't cat experts. You know, sometimes Italian gun manufacturers aren't even gun experts, if I'm being completely honest. They make some dumb decisions sometimes. Still a good amount of gunk in there. Have I ever played Red Dead Redemption 2? I have. I've played it several times, and basically the the intro is is really long. So intense music and Zach says something angrily. Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. Alright, I'm not gonna change the music, I was just saying. Also, Rip, Gaston, Glock. Yes, Rip in pepperonis, Gaston, Glock. May you see many, many fine horses up in, uh, I don't know, Glock heaven. Ooh. Why is my rag so dirty? Which one? This one? This, these rags are clean. This one is absolutely filthy because I use it to clean all kinds of guns. I, I like... Dude, I use this rag to clean... This is basically what I do is I use a rag until the point that it is unusable. Look at this thing. I use a rag till the point that it's unusable. Is there a story behind my cleaning rag? Ah, uh, it's just an old t-shirt. My previous... My previous uh, rag that I used to clean guns was a... Shouldn't be scraping that off over the frame. 
My previous rag that I used to clean guns was a, um, it was a t-shirt that had a fake element on it. The element was bacon. So it said B-A for like bacon. It was, it was kind of fun. Anyway, I like tore a huge hole in it. So I was just like, all right, well, we're gonna use to clean guns. How did I get a hole in my glove already? It is one of those titanium pry, pry tools, Gladden. It is, uh, there you go. Norton's Universal Cleaning Stick from Countycom.com. Um, getting off on a completely different tangent. I love the website Countycom. They have all kinds of really cool stuff. That's actually where this thing right here is from. This little, um, it's a little like rubber glow in the dark thing that I put bits in. I got so much crap from Countycom. Uh, it's one of the only websites that I'm still signed up for emails from. And every single time I think, well, I guess I don't really need anything else from there. They're like, oh, by the way, we came out with this new product. And I'm just like, God damn. Like, they, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So hang on, hang on, hang on. Every single time I think, yeah, I don't need anything. I don't need anything from County Com. I'm good. I'm good. And then they send me an email. Hey, by the way, we made this doorstop out of uh, out of like a rubberized material. You know, you can just jam it into a door frame, and then you can't open the door anymore. Or you can just use it as a normal doorstop. And I'm like, you motherfuckers, give it to me. Fine, I will pay fifty dollars for your stupid doorstop. It wasn't actually fifty bucks. I think it was like twenty dollars. I think they have another one that's made out of like Delrin that's like $50. That one is actually expensive, but that's because you have to machine Delrin. You can't just injection mold it. Uh, you know what? Actually, yeah, it is my very own door wedge. I own a door wedge from uh, Ready or Not. I own the Ready or Not door wedge. What should I spend the remaining $20 on, I have on my Amazon gift card you got for Christmas? Get Goose Light? You know, I think actually you might be able to get Goose Light. I think Goose Light is on Amazon. He does this. Check us out. Ready? There you go. Goose Light. Isn't that a game studio? If it isn't a game studio, it should be a game studio. What's the point of a doorstop? Uh, you get like, okay, so the door that's, that doorstop is currently on, if I don't fully close the door or jam the doorstop into it, it goes <laughs> And then I get real fucking mad at it. So that's the point of a doorstop. <laughs> Thank you very much for the bits, Rels. What's my favorite gun that I own? My favorite gun I own is the Bruger and Tomet TP9. That is my favorite gun that I own. Zach has a sudden need to buy rubber door stops instead of getting them, woo! Instead of getting them from a local school cheapy cheap. There we go. I need to not do that on the actual desk. No, I got the, um, the TP9 is the semi-auto one. The MP9 is the full auto one. Um, I do not have enough money to buy, uh, I don't have enough money to buy full auto. Is that all clean to you guys? Here. I think it looks mostly clean. There's probably a little bit more I could get in there, but at this point, it's, uh, I don't know. Might be a bit much. How fast can I strip and assemble a pistol? Depends on what pistol. You know, it depends entirely on what pistol it is. Oh, look, another resubscriber. Thank you very much, Bacon Games. Oh, I'm sorry, Bacon Gamer for the three-month subscription. Really appreciate it, man.
Yeah, I don't I don't make enough money for full auto. I only make I only make enough money for fully semi auto. Ever messed up while brushing the barrel just to sand off part of your finger with the bristles? I have done that. You want to know what my favorite injury involving uh, involving firearms cleaning is? Ooh, there we go. Oh, this is way better. That worked great. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Hang on. We're having minor complications. There we go. Yeah, you want to know what my favorite injury for, um... How does that happen? My favorite injury for, uh, firearms cleaning. I'm gonna take those off. My hands... Look at how sweaty my hands get. This is the problem is I have... I, have, I am just a sweaty, sweaty man. Alright. I am just a sweaty man. So, like, I kind of have to wear gloves while I'm cleaning firearms. But they get really, they get really sweaty while I'm wearing gloves. Okay, so, my favorite injury. On the side of a 50 caliber machine gun, let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can pull this up and I can show you. Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. I really appreciate it, man. Oh, why am I... well... Uh, yeah, that'll work. Oh, that works perfectly. Oh, that works great. That works great. Open image in new tab. Perfect. And then we'll just do... There we go. Okay, so on the side of a 50 cal machine gun, you have a bunch of, uh, you have a bunch of bolts like this that need what's called lacing wire. Alright? Um, hand sanitizer helps dry your hand when you need to re-glove. That's not a bad idea. Um, I don't know if I have any hand sanitizer. Anyway, you use lacing wire on a bunch of parts of the 50, so this is just one of them. There's more lacing wire that goes elsewhere. I can't remember exactly where else. Usually on these two, those need to be laced down. Um, so... Thank you very much, The Rookie Gaming. So I'm working on a 50 cal at one point, and my, I was, I was, you have to use this pair of pliers that grabs onto it, and then you pull on the, um, you pull on the back of the pliers, and it spins the pliers right, you know what, here, I'll just show you the image again. Let me see. There we go. Thank you very much, The Rookie Gaming for 100 bits, and Yeet Cannon 45 for 100 bits. Thank you very much. What's my dream gun? I have several dream guns. Um, I'll tell you in just a second. I got really bad ADHD, so I keep getting distracted. Okay, anyway, my favorite injury. You have to use lacing wire on the side of a 50 cal. You have to use these things called lacing wire pliers. You grab onto the, the wire with the pliers, and then you pull on this knob on the back, and they spin around in a circle. And then that's what, that's what like, tightens up the lacing wire. Anyway. Get out of here, display capture. I'm working on a 50 cal, and I'm trying to get the lacing wire, uh, I'm trying to like work on the lacing wire, and my hand slipped, and the lacing wire, which is just a thin piece of, a thin strand of wire, my hand slipped on it, and the lacing wire went underneath my thumbnail, uh, about to here. Which was exactly as much fun as you think it would be. That one's probably my favorite one. My second favorite one is there was a 240 Bravo stock with a sticker attached to it. It was like a shipping stick. You know the ones where it's like a plastic, it's like a plastic bag with adhesive on the back of it? One of those was on there. Thank you very much, Crasher, and Little Miss Cindy for the 100 bits. I really appreciate it. Uh, 
What was I? What was I saying? Oh yeah, there was a there was like a shipping label on the back of it, and I went to pull the shipping label off of it, and I pulled it like this towards my face. And my hand slipped on it, so I basically just hit myself in the face with the stock of a belt-fed machine gun. Um, I don't know how I didn't lose a tooth from that. Anyway. I might need more gloves, damn it. Where did I put those? Oh, there they are. Gloves. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, also, Nick, for the subscription. I really appreciate it, man. I don't know why it didn't show me that one. Why? Oh, there it is. Thank you very much, also, Nick, for the subscription. Thank you very much, Bacon Gamer, for the three-month subscription. I already thanked you, but I'm thanking you again because I'm, I'm losing track of things. I got real bad ADHD, you guys. You don't understand. You don't understand how bad my ADHD is. Thought I was sitting on my gloves? No, I got multiple disposable gloves. I just threw them away. What did I just join? You just joined me cleaning guns. Where the hell are my cleaning patches? There they are. Anyway, yeah, so that was my personal favorite. Subscription, how generous. Thank you very much for the anonymous gifted sub, Mr. Anonymous Gifter. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so that's my favorite injury. My favorite injury where I basically shoved a uh, chunk of wire underneath my thumbnail, probably about a good half an inch. That was incredibly painful. You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, KM Key. For this for this subscription. Oh look, another resubscriber. And evil McBad guy. For the three month subscription, I got bad ADHD. We'll give you more bits to help. God damn it, Crasher! Thank you very much for the bits. Oh, I told that. Oh, you told them I stopped talking about intro. Oh shit! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry, mods, and I'm sorry, chat. Would I ever want to try designing my own gun? Maybe. Back to back from browsing the entire county com website. Welcome. How does that look now? Does it look better? I think that looks a lot better. Yeah, it looks good. All right. Lubricant. We need lubricant. We need lubricant. Oh my god, it's taking me like an hour to clean this one gun. Jesus Christ. Looks like it's never been shot. No, I've shot it a decent amount. I'm just kind of anal retentive about gun cleaning. Great, that works. That works. Uh. Iron Mouse saw Mike and I's video on the hentai incident. I saw that. She didn't really have much to say about it. I'm not saying I blame her or anything. I would be really confused if someone showed me that out of the blue too, but... And I'm not... What the fuck? Okay, those are the same size. All right. Yeah, I felt kind of oh, weird look, that someone was like, you guys watch this video by from Zach and Mike. They could have showed her any video that we had done, but they chose the hentai incident, which is a little weird. Anyway. Thank you very much, Thanis. For those bits, and thank you to Te Parabellum 
for the three-month subscription. What do I think is a better pistol, the Glock 19 or the P30? I'm gonna say the Glock 19 is... <sighs> for e in terms of ease of manufacture, and it's sheer prolific appearance, the Glock 19 is better. Emote only chat. Beep boop. Anyway, in terms of uh, ease of manufacture and sheer prolificness, the Glock 19 is better, but I think the HKP 30 is a better gun. At least, well, I like the HKP 30 better. Good lord, Magnet, stop it. Magnet, you need to not do the thing that you cannot help for, like, just one goddamn second. All right, Magnet? No, I can't help it. I have to be a Magnet. I don't know why the Magnet sounds like that. Hey, oh my, oh my god, is that that song from V for Vendetta? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, got a Ruger for charges, charger for Christmas. I don't know why I'm saying this, but yeah, hell yeah, man. Ruger charger is a cool oh, look, gun. Another resubscriber. Thank you very much, Bigger Batter Loops. This is a cool stream. Thanks, man. I think so. I like to think it's a cool stream. You guys ever see V for Vendetta? That's a cool movie. Alan Moore is a psychopath. Yeah, dude, Alan Moore is a fucking nut job. Didn't he marry a sock puppet? He's a weirdo. He's a cool weirdo, but he's a weirdo. I don't know if I'd want to hang out with him, but he's a fucking weirdo. How did I react to Gaston Glock's passing? It made me sad, but like, also... My guy was fucking damn near 100 years old, so it was going to happen sooner or later. And also to be kind of a jackass, it's not like he was really designing anything new. I mean, you know, honestly, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't actually know if that's true. He may have been designing new guns up until the day he died. Uh, and yeah, it did make me kind of sad that he died, but, you know, like I said... Um, my man was damn near 100 years old. I hope he had a good life and I hope he enjoyed it. Shot the. Thank you very much for the bits, little. or. lit. lit torch! There we go, lit torch. Thank you very much for the bits. Shot the Taurus knockoff of this gun, and I swear it's one of the only semi auto pistols where you can still play Russian roulette with it. You know? I don't think you're wrong. You have another subscriber. Gaston Glock did make a lot of horses happy. Oh look, another resubscriber. And thank you very much, Lizard Man, for the three-month subscription. That feels pretty good. Yeah, that feels good, well lubricated, didn't clean the magazine, nice work. Great, now the magazine is cleaned. All right. Bretta 3032 cleaned. Next gun. Next song. Next song. Next! Now we do the, where is it? Nope, I want to change the Oh goodness, the text. so many gifted subscriptions, oh you must really hate money. Thank you very much, Red Hood, for the five gifted subs. I really appreciate it. You have another subscriber. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, this is the Bobcat. Great! And thank you, Red Dragon, for the Tier 1 subscription. I really appreciate it, man.
All right. Will not be able to use this cleaning patch because that is going to be way too chunky for the uh, for that poor little twenty-two caliber barrel. Uh, oh yeah, I can't use this cleaning rod either. Or yeah, I can't use this whole cleaning rod. Gotta put those away for right now. Cause we this cleaning rod. Oh, by the way, completely. It's completely random. Greetings, Ace of Spade. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um. This is oh, look, the. Another uh, subscriber. Thank you very much, Red Hood, for the tier one subscription. I need to move current gun over because it interrupts. I don't know if that's better. That'll have to do. Uh, this is my thing that I keep all my different little cleaning brushes in so they don't get caught on stuff. And this is a matchbook or match Oh goodness, safe. so many gifted subscriptions. Oh you must God. really hate money. Thank you very much, Apocalyptic Rex Fox, for the 20 gifted subscriptions. I really appreciate it, man. So, it's just this little container. It's, God damn, that is 20 gifted subs. Oh my God. I just realized that's 20 gifted subs. Holy shit. Thank you so much, man. Damn. I really appreciate it, dude. Oh look, another resubscriber. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tank Destroyer, for the 17 month subscription. Have some money for tank or er, for some ammo. Thank you. So it's just a little metal tube and you unscrew it. And then the lid just pops off there and you keep matches in it. Or in my case, you keep uh cleaning accessories in there. So they don't get caught on stuff. See, look at that, isn't that smart? Please post this video later. I will, don't worry. It will go up on my VOD channel. All right, we're gonna put this away for now. Because I need to get my other cleaning kit. Uh, to clean the 22. Great. Great. So yeah, I legitimately, um, I have two of this pistol. Well, not this exact one. I have the Beretta 21A, which is this one, and the Beretta 3032 Tomcat, which is the one that I was just doing. And I got that because I bought, ow. I bought the little 32 ACP one and then I thought it was so funny to run it suppressed that I uh, I kind of had to get the um, the 22 long rifle version because it was just too funny not to. Did I have a range weekend for Christmas? Kinda. Yeah, the 21A is is stupidly fun to run with the suppressor. It is a little, uh, it is a little finicky. Thank you very much, Green Winged, for stopping by. I really appreciate it, man. It is a little finicky, though. You kind of got to get just the right ammo for it. Because I'll have, sometimes I'll try to shoot it and it just, it just doesn't want to function. It'll just stovepipe or the whole round will just pop out of the gun weird. And that's... That's partially because um, 22 long rifle was never really designed to be uh, run out of an auto loader. Rimmed cartridges don't like auto loaders. If we're extra good, Zach might shoot his camera like all the Instagram lives. God, I hope not. 
Did I get the Beretta 150 rebates on these? Hell yeah, man. I'm still waiting on the one for this. It takes a while. The first one, honestly, the first one took like three months. So it's not, it, it does take a while. Get. Fired my 40 cal Beretta today and a stovepipe on me a couple times. Do you need to, do I need to clean it more? I don't know. What's stovepipe mean? Stovepipe is, I will, I will demonstrate it for you. Not with an actual live cartridge. Stovepipe is basically when the cartridge tries to eject and it ends up sticking out of the gun like this. That's what a, that's what a stovepipe is. It's called a stovepipe because you have the opening of the cartridge just sticking out of the top of it and it looks like a stovepipe. Also, yes, stovepiping is the thing that messed up Revolver Ocelot because he was shooting his autoloader like it was a revolver. Which is a little funny to me, but... Cleaning. We cleaning. Man, the overture of 1812 was fucking long. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just long, you know. Everything clean. Everything clean. Any New Year's plans? Uh, I guess not really. Well, I plan to cry a lot. How about coming back to Tarkov? No. Not coming back to Tarkov. That will not be happening anytime soon. In certain performances, they sub the cannons for drum. See, that's not fair. They should never be allowed to do that. Don't cry. We'll, you'll do range day with me. Oh, no, that's from a, that's from a bit. I, um... Ooh, I like this song. It's from a bit about a... Uh, about the space program and they're interviewing this guy and they're like what do you plan to do while you're in space and he's like well i plan to cry a lot <laughs> which is kind of similar to what michael collins said when they interviewed him uh Before they, before Apollo 11 launched, they interviewed him at one point, and they're like, "How will you feel being farthest away from any human than anyone has ever been in human history?" And he said, "I, I mean, I'm going to bring a book." Thank you very much, Blind Cow, for the kind words. I really appreciate it. Wait, no, I'm sorry, I misread that. That's uh, W N K Incorporated. Thank you very much, W N K Inc. I really appreciate it. You know, I think that's supposed to be staked in place. So I just realized, if you look right here, oh here, I'll turn it over. So that's the magazine release right there. It's release of the magazine. If you look right there, you can see that there's two little dents. Focus, focus, 
There's two little dents on there. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be staked in place. And it came loose. I'm gonna have to Loctite that. Because I don't want the magazine release just falling out of my gun while I'm shooting it. Hmm. Alright. And I put the handle away for this. Weird question, what keyboard is that? Um... I don't know, I can't remember. Let me see, I can tell you, it's just gonna take me a second. Yep, it's a G, it's a Logitech G815. There we go. Clean. Do I want to clean your guns? Uh, you know what? If you pay me, I'll clean your guns. Ooh. Got a Star BM and a Beretta 92D that could use some finer cleaning. Star BM sounds interesting. Hey! Stop flopping all over the place. Hope I'm having a good night. Thank you very much. I am... It's going pretty well. Also, thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. Clean. How many guns do I have? Uh, enough that I can't remember. And it legitimately enough that I do not remember how many guns I own. What's the best and worst gun I've ever had the experience of working on shooting? The worst gun I've ever shot is um Uh, the, the Zip 22. The Zip 22 is the worst gun I've ever shot, and I owned one because I bought one before we knew how terrible they were. And if I could buy one, would I get a, a Shogren Inertial? If I had, if money was no object, yes, I would get one. Um... But because money is an object, I probably won't be able to. Great. Oh, I gotta clean. Ah! I forgot I have to clean this thing. You have an old U-1911 that says U.S. Army on it. Is there a way I can track its service history via the serial number? It depends on the manufacturer. If it's a Colt, Colt has a serial number lookup on their website. At least they used to last time I checked. Um, you can just go onto Colt's web, uh, website and they should be able to tell you... Uh, a little bit about it, but I will let you know that most of it is basically just going to be when it was manufactured and who they sold it to, which is going to be U.S. Army. So, yes you can, but it won't be as much information as you would want. Well, you know, I, I shouldn't say that because maybe that's all the information you want. What do I say is the best AR-15 brand? That depends entirely on you what you want to do You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, Soda Fountain. 
Yeah, I think that depends entirely on what you want your AR-15 to do. And also how much money you want to spend on one. Because, like, I like LMT, but, God, they're fucking expensive. I don't even own an LMT. That's how expensive LMTs are. I would like one. I'm just not going to spend, you know, $3,000 on one. They're very expensive. If I could pick one imaginary gun from a game, what would I pick? Uh, yeah, Hex said I like the sur I like the service weapon from Control. I think that one's really cool. That would probably be my preferred imaginary weapon. Um, infinite ammo. Trying to think about what so what would what would be some other ones? Uh, you know, like the pulse rifle from Aliens would be cool. Obviously. Why didn't I put the grips back on this thing? Fortune's Railgun would be pretty sick. Yeah. Anyone know where I could buy 8mm Mauser from and clips for a Carabiner 98? Uh, the stripper clips, uh, Apex gun parts. As for ammo, um, I'm not sure. There's so many different websites that sell ammo. Apex might sell ammo. Am I going to clean a revolver tonight? I, you know, believe it or not, I actually do not own a revolver. I should amend that. The problem is all the revolvers I want are really expensive and I have a hard time being like, yes, I'll totally spend $1,800 on a revolver. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, 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 Ooh, if I just use bolt action from World War II, what do I choose? I want a Gewehr 98, not the Carabiner 98. I think it's cooler when it's the longer version. Um, I also would take a Steyr M95, or uh. Any straight pole. Swiss K31, that'd be another really good one. Thank you very much, Jupiter Jazz, for the bits. 200 bits. Uh, this is the second Beretta I've cleaned. Is there any difference between the pistols I cleaned, or are they just generally similar? It only chat. Beep boop. They, this one, this one and the one I just cleaned are basically the exact same pistol. Uh... With the exception being that this one is just a little bit smaller. You've got a different trigger guard on the front of it. The safety itself is a little... The safety mechanism is a little bit different. But they both function the exact same way. They're both blowback operated pistols with a tip-up barrel. Um, the whole purpose of the tip-up barrel is because this little slide is kind of finicky and hard to grab onto. So for ladies or people with smaller hands, they designed the tip-up barrel... So you take the loaded magazine, this one is unloaded, but for demonstration purposes, let's pretend this is loaded. You put the loaded magazine into the gun, and then you actuate the tip-up barrel, drop around in the barrel, and close it, so you don't have to try to pull back on the slide at any point. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, yeah, it's not a bad design at all. It's been around a long time. That feels pretty good. Great! Boop, 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 boop. Boop. All right. Are you guys ready for what the next gun is? I don't think you are ready. You might think you're ready. 
but I don't think you're actually ready. Are you ready? Yes, it's SOCOM time. It's SOCOM time. I do not have, well, okay, so I have a laser aiming module for it, but it is not the laser aiming module for it. I know you guys are excited about that thing. Yeah, I'm excited about it because I own it. So it is not the laser aiming module, unfortunately. It is a laser aiming module. As you can see, green laser. See? Green laser. Mark 23 SOCOM. Have I been getting up to any super sneaky antics with this gun lately? I have not been. I have not been getting up to super sneaky antics, unfortunately. Greetings, Mr. Fancy Panzer. And thank you very much, Kyo Silver, for the 100 bits. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, oh, you, you, you guys want to see something cool? Do you want to see something cool? Do you want to see something cool? Hang on. Is it... Thank you for the bits. Crasher, is that my EDC? No, it isn't actually my EDC, unfortunately. Where are the micro dot? I don't want to put a red dot on this. Uh, I may at some point buy a second slide for this. If I get a second slide for it, I'll put a red dot on the other slide. Uh, but I kind of don't want to ruin the, the slide that it came with, if only because that slide is serial number not marked to that frame. So maybe at some point in the future, I'll try to buy a second slide and put that one on there. How big is this gun? Quite big. Yeah. Ugh. Here's a P90 for comparison. P90? Mark 23 SOCOM. Almost as big as a almost as big as a P90. It's getting there. The, um, the Mark 23 SOCOM is, uh, the Mark 23 SOCOM is actually one millimeter, one millimeter shorter than a Desert Eagle. Only one. What light is that? This is the Streamlight TLR HLG, or TLR2 HLG. Uh, which is a light and laser. Nah, come on. Come on. There you go. There you go, Mark 23. Yeah, this gun, it's big. It's big. Though, to be fair, it, it's big, but it's not that big. There are actually other guns that are similar in size. Like, a 1911 really isn't that much bit smaller. Um, 1911 really isn't that much smaller than the Mark 23 SOCOM. There's a lot of really cool stuff about the Mark 23, which I can go over with you as we clean. 
Does the SOCOM have the slide cycle lock? It does not. That was the Phase 1 Trials Mark 23. Had a little lever that was right about here-ish. I say lever, sorry. It's, um, it's like a latch that was right about here. And then there was a spot machined into the slide, which I think normally would be... Yeah. Basically what this lever would do is it would index with this spot on the slide, which is normally how you disassemble it. Um, and what that would do is you would push that lever up and that would index with the slide and then that would make it not actually cycle. So you had to manually rack the action every single time to, uh, to fire the gun. It did make it a little, it did make it a little um, quieter. But basically during phase one trials, they were like, yeah, that's kind of pointless because you still have to rack the slide every single time. So just get rid of it. It's just like, it's a lot of extra work for something that doesn't honestly offer a whole lot of benefit. So they got rid of the slide lock in, during the phase one trials. Um, one, of the, one of the other things they got rid of during the phase one trials is there were front cocking serrations here and here on the slide. Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. What does SOCOM mean? SOCOM stands for Special Operations Command. It's kind of just colloquially used to mean special forces. So like Navy SEALs, Delta, stuff like that. Oh, I wasn't using it. Huh, interesting. Okay. I forgot I was using white lithium grease on this and not TW25. Not that that means anything, but... The Metal Gear is active? Well, the Metal Gear is going to have to fucking wait because I'm not done cleaning this thing yet. It's the little brother of the Mark 23. What are my thoughts on the USP? The USP is an absolutely fantastic handgun. I love the USP. I love most of the guns H&K makes. I like to constantly refer to myself as an HK fanboy in remission. Even though I'm not really in remission. Do I work at a gun shop in Indiana? I do not work at a gun shop in Indiana. You want to make the mistake of meeting one of your heroes? No, you don't want to meet me. I'm horrible. I got bad breath and I talk weird. And I smell bad. And I'm ugly too. <laughs> My wife is in the other room just going, that's not true. <laughs> I'm a big stinky man. Uh, on the, you know what? On the topic, I, this is a perfect time. This is a perfect time to talk about this. This is a perfect time to talk about this, you guys. Dagger says it's only partially true. It's a little true. Why the fuck do shampoo companies insist on putting uh, sandalwood in everything? What if I want to smell like a delicious orange? I don't want to fucking smell like sandalwood. I don't like sandalwood. Why do you think I would like sandalwood? Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. Aw, oh, you guys are sweet. The shampoo that I was using is uh, was made by... It doesn't matter what company it was made by... It doesn't matter what what company it was made by. I was using this shampoo, and they decided to stop making the. Um, they started decided to stop making the orange citrus scent that I was getting. The song that's playing right now is the song that was playing the first time I picked up a Mark Twenty Three SoCom. More like sandal wouldn't. <laughs> That's really funny, Joko Beast. Thank you very much for the bits. Um, yeah, it's it's really annoying that like I just want to uh, 
I don't want sandalwood scent. I don't like it. And yet, it's that's like the only fucking scent I can find. It's really annoying. Are you clean yet, Mark 23 slide? Come on. Oh my god. Thank you very much, Slavic Cthulhu, for the 1,500 bits. I really appreciate it, man. And thank you, Crasher, for the 100 bits. Who wants sandalwood? I don't want hippie footwear smell. Why would you? I was talking to my wife earlier, and I said that I don't want to smell like a hippie sawmill. She thought that was really funny. Alright, that's probably good. We can... No, no, it isn't. We can get right here. Hey! So, one of the things that I think is really interesting about the Mark 23... I'll show you on the slide. On the inside of the slide, you'll notice there's this massive, empty space right here. Just like where my brain should be. There's also a massive empty space right here, just like where my brain should be. Did I say that? I said that already. There's a massive empty space here and here. Which is right next to where the firing pin is. The thing that's neat about that is if... So, the way this would work... That's what the back of the slide looks like. The reason that is interesting is because if this area gets filled with mud... If this area gets filled with mud, or snow, or ice, what a, ice, uh, ice probably not, never mind. If it gets filled with mud, or snow, maybe like dust, and you pull the trigger, you know, I should actually just leave it together, and you pull the trigger on it, normally that would cause the gun to not fire. By having those massive spaces in there, what can theoretically happen is the hammer comes forward and just pushes everything out of the way into these massive recesses. It's really interesting that they that they went like that far when engineering this. That there's actually a spot for stuff to theoretically get out of the way. Uh on the on the firearm. It's really cool. It's anyway. I think it's I just think they're neat. Uh, barrel. Does it work? I haven't tried to fill it with, uh, I haven't tried to fill it with schmutz, so I don't actually know if it works. But I would assume it does. You want to smell like vanilla or chai? I don't want to smell like sandalwood or whatever the fuck crack and growled is supposed to be. If invited, would I go to Donut Operator's next range day in March? Um, I was actually invited. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Whatever. I, ju I just I basically just said it anyway. I was actually invited to his last one. I was unable to go. I really, really wanted to, but because I was in the middle of moving, it just it it didn't work out. Um, I, hopefully I can go to his next one. I would really like to go to it. But yeah, I, I couldn't go. I was in the middle of moving. I felt so bad that I wasn't able to make it. I would have loved to go. Hopefully I can make it to the next one. And, uh, you know, if, uh, Demolition Ranch is there and he has an MP7, I would not complain. Because it's probably the only time I'll ever actually get to be able to fire a full auto MP7. I want to smell like Samurai Glacial Blast. I just want to smell like Baja Blast. Do you guys know Baja Blast is 20 years old? Like, what? How is Baja Blast 20 years old? Baja Blast sucks? Time that man out for five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. You're allowed to have your own opinion. It's fine, man. I'm not, don't actually time him out for five minutes. Uh... You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, Just Walter, for the subscription. Also, thank you, Crasher, for the 100 bits. What gifts did I get for Christmas? I got a bunch of really cool stuff for Christmas. 
Um, I got a lot of really cool books. Do you guys... Wouldn't be the first time I've gotten timed out for saying that. I know that's why I'm not actually going to do it this time. Do you guys want to see a really... You, you have are... another subscriber. Thank you very much. Jekyll doesn't... the Jekyll doesn't hide for the tier one subscription. So, fun fact about the Mark 23 SOCOM. We're probably going to get a few of... You, you guys are probably going to get a few of these, just so you know. At the time... Well, so... You'll notice... You'll notice on this barrel, if the camera will focus, camera please, camera please, there you go. You'll notice on this barrel that there is a rubber O-ring on there. A rubber room, a rubber room filled with rats, rats, I hate rats, they drive me crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. Okay, so there's a rubber O-ring on this barrel. And you might think like, what the hell is that doing on there? Focus, please. Yeah, you might think like, what the hell is that doing on there? At the time when this was designed, because this was designed in the mid-90s, basically what you had to do on most handguns is you had to have some type of bushing for the barrel to lock into the slide. And that helps with accuracy. Sadly, it's now inaccurate as it doesn't include cat fanboy mates. Goodness. Thank you very much for the bits, Maxinery. You had to have some kind of bushing in the end of the slide so that the barrel had a good spot to lock into. Um, usually what that meant on most handguns, for like cheaper handguns, it meant that you just kind of threw it on there and didn't particularly care. On more expensive handguns, it, mean that it meant that you had to put a bushing in there, you had to hand fit that bushing. It required a lot of like tuning and filing and making sure that it was correct. What they did on the Mark 23 SOCOM is they just put a rubber O-ring in there. So the rubber O-ring would just go and stick into this spot right here. And just, uh, it made sure that it would always fit the same way every single time, which increased accuracy. Um, and then after, I forget how many rounds it is. I think honestly, it's like 10,000 rounds in between replacements, which is kind of silly. Um, you don't need to, or you need to replace it like about every 10,000 rounds. But basically what it meant was that you, HEK found a way to get around having to hand fit a bunch of barrels to the Mark 23 SOCOM by just putting a little rubber O-ring on there. And it also meant that its accuracy stayed really high throughout uh, basically the weapon's entire service life. Um, it's, it's, it's really interesting that like this is something that they came up with and like nobody would nobody thought to do this before it's such an interesting invention also another cool thing about this gun is that it is it is called or it is what is called polygonally bored so if you look into the barrel, you can see that it's, you can see the rifling in there, but they're not really sharp edges. The rifling is just like little tiny hills. Um, polygonal rifling. Ooh, polygonal rifling is really cool. It's also a bit more expensive to do than, um, than other types of rifling. It's more time consuming, a bit more expensive. Um, but it means that the bullet meshes to the walls of the barrel better, which gets you slightly higher muzzle velocity and gets you just a little bit more accuracy. It also makes cleaning the gun a lot easier. Is it sort of like free-floating a barrel on an AR-15? No, it doesn't give you that much more accuracy. It gives you a little bit, but not that much more accuracy.
And another fun fact, this barrel is a chrome lined. Which again, aids in cleaning and uh, it aids in cleaning and it um, also adds a high level of corrosion resistance. Isn't that neat? Anyway. They do that for a lot of military weapons is they chrome line the barrels because it adds in corrosion resistance. Uh, Pattern reminds me of James Bond. Yeah, it's because they're they're looking down the barrel of a gun in shame in the start of the James Bond sequence. Ah! Stop catching on things. Cleaning thing. Cleaning thing. Carbon scraping tool, go. Yeah, the James Bond intros, you are the POV of the bullet. Well, I guess you're the POV of the barrel, but... Also, this is the, um... This is the first time I've ever done a gun cleaning stream, and it's going pretty well, I would say. Maybe I'll have to do more of these in the future. Makes you wonder how they got blood in the barrel after bonfires. You know, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh. Yeah, no, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Is this the new Rudy 2D point and shooty? No, I've actually had this Mark 23 for a while. The gun is an organic life form. Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. Zach's gun cleaning vids bring all the boys to the yard. My gun cleaning vids bring the boys to the yard. They're like, pew, pew, pew. Damn right, pew, pew, pew. I can teach you, but I'd have to pew, pew, pew. That was terrible. Cleaning patch. No, this is not my EDC. Would you guys like to see my EDC? I'm gonna warn you, it's very un unimpressive. Oh, sorry, I saw a bunch of yeses, but I one of my mods said no, so you guys can't see it, sorry. No, I'm just, I don't mean that. I don't actually mean that. Do not get mad at my mod. I will show you guys my EDC. Give me just one second. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Hex. I'm sorry. The moment I said it, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have fucking said that. I shouldn't have said that. EDC is everyday carry. Yeah, look, how, look how clean that barrel is. Look how clean that barrel is now. TP has all the Saturnite specials in his collection. Actually, Treasure Panda, one of Treasure Panda's favorite hobbies which is where he is right now, is to go, um, it's to go hang out down by the, uh, the river and, with a magnet and fish out all of the, um, fish out all the guns that people throw in there after crimes. You would not believe how many high points and Taurus revolvers he has. All right. This, this is my EDC. This is the gun. Hang on. I'm going to put my headphones back on. I want to hear music. So this is my EDC. This is the gun that I carry on a, on a daily basis. It is a Glock 19 Gen 4. Thank you very much, Keo Silver, for the bits. 
It's a Glock 19 Gen 4. This one is special to me because this one is a... It's a clone of the U.S. military Mark 27 Mod 2? I think it's Mod 2. Is it Mod 1? Oh, I could be wrong. What kind of grip tape? <laughs> it's just black medical tape. I just went and bought black medical tape and wrapped it around the grip. Isn't that, isn't that funny? Um, so this is a clone of the Mark 27 handgun. What the Mark 27 is, is it's a Glock 19 MOS that uh, S uh, Army SF uses. Other branches of the military can use it too, Although but Army another SF subscriber. Uses it. Thank you very much, Evil Colonel Dyson. I really appreciate it for the three month subscription. What iron sights? Uh, Trigicon. These are Trigicon iron sights. This is an RMR uh, 07. Yeah, RM07. Um, so what the Mark 27 is, is Army SF. Uh, you can still see through, yeah. You can still see through raised iron sights. They're really, they're really not that, uh, oh man, this is gonna be awkward to do. They're really not that tall. Like, honestly, the iron sights really are not that tall. Isn't this supposed to have an X300U for the clone build? Yes, if it was a 100% clone, then it would have an X300U. However, because I have this on there, which is the... Who makes this one? I forget who makes this. Uh, I think Tango Down. So Tango Down slide release. Not, makes it not clone correct. Um, the, a, the What is called the FBI mag release because it's an extended magazine release, but it's barely extended and they tapered the front of it because the FBI specifically wanted a magazine release that was slightly more tapered on the front. Um, also, it has a lanyard loop on the back, so it's not perfect clone. Uh, I also kind of don't care uh, because if it was a perfect clone, then it wouldn't be a clone. It would just actually be a Mark 27. So anyway, the um, what the Mark 27 is, is in the mid... 2000s, I think, mid noughties. No, let's. Uh, sorry, but probably like or like 2010s. In the 2010s, um, Delta Force was using modified Glock 17s, and as th is the way with the re with the entire army, not just Special Forces. Uh, Special Forces saw the saw Delta Force using Glock 17s and went, "Damn, son, that's hot shit. We want those. We want Glock 17s." And the higher ups, big army, was like, no, 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 you have a full sized handgun. You don't need another, you have a full sized handgun. You use the Beretta 92 FS, you've got the 1911, you don't need another full sized handgun. And they went, okay. They went, all right, bet, we don't have a compact handgun. So can we get Glock 19s? And uh, Big Army went, yeah, okay, you can get Glock 19s. So that's what this is. This is basically a Glock 19 that Army SF got instead of a Glock 17 because they couldn't get a full-size handgun. Um, I specifically followed... Uh, um, Oh, what is the name of the channel? Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Inferior Rifles. He basically did a whole a whole video on the Mark 27. I really like that video. I kind of followed his lead on that one. Um, the modifications that I've made to it are uh, raised iron sights. Technically, Army SF would not have the raised iron sights. The optics plate that's on here, they would not have. This is a... Uh, who makes this one? Oh, I can't remember the name of the company now. There's a specific company that makes this uh, uh, makes this optics plate, and I'm, it's escaping me right now. They have a they have a, a swan is their logo, but everybody calls it a goose. Ford Controls Designs. It's a Ford Controls Designs optics plate because the MOS optics plate is kind of crap. Um, I put an extended slide release on there because the Glock one is a oh, little look, another small. Subscriber. Thank you very much, Private Pounder for the 20 month resubscription. Um, the magazine release is, like I said, the FBI mag release, which is an extended 
It's a OEM Glock component that they made specifically for the FBI trials, and the FBI was basically, uh, um, they wanted it to have a slight taper to it. I added a lanyard ring onto it because lanyard rings are a fucking vibe. Uh, and that's pretty much it. The funny thing, the reason this pistol is special to me and funny to me is because I decided to build this about a week after Glock said that they were no longer making the Gen 4s. So Glock stopped making the Gen 4 model. And I was like, well shit, how am I going to build a Mark 27 clone now? And basically that same day... Oh look, another resubscriber. Thank you very much, Stuffs, for the 15-month subscription. I really appreciate it, man. Basically that same day, I was at a gun show, and I found this complete Glock 19 MOS slide. Um, at, a, at a gun show, I was like, oh shit, hell yeah. So I bought the, Glo I bought the complete MOS slide. Bought a threaded barrel for it, which is why the barrel... Serial number does not match the serial number on the slide, which also doesn't match the serial number on the frame. And then I went on Gunbroker and found a Gen 4 frame by itself. And technically, this is a frame for... Uh, I think it's a, frame, a Glock 23 frame. Which, to be completely honest, there's no difference between a 23 and a 19 frame. They're the exact same frame. Um... So yeah, this is a Glock 23 frame with a 19 MOS slide and then a threaded barrel that doesn't have... If you buy the threaded barrel by itself, it will not match anything. It has the part number and not a serial number on it. They did actually make Mark 27s that got sold on the civilian market as a Mark 27. They are not marked Mark 27. But if you know where to look, you can tell it's a Mark 27. All the serial numbers will match. Um, there will be a couple other little goofy things about it. Anyway. Enough of that tangent about my everyday carry gun. Thank you very much, Kyo Silver, for the 50 bits. You got a Glock 23. It was your first handgun. Hell yeah, man. You know, I've never actually owned a 40 caliber handgun. This is my boomstick, 12-gauge, double-barrel Remington. Sweet Baby was made in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Retails for about $109.95. Walnut stock, cobalt blue steel, and a hair trigger. Shop smart. Shop S-smart. You got that! <laughs> yeah, I think it was an Ithaca, not a Remington. I don't know why I know that, but I, I think that's actually correct. Have a range day today? I was recently, I was like just shooting the other day. Groovy. Anyway. Yet no M4 shotgun. I do have a Benelli M4 shotgun. It's just in a different room. I didn't shoot it the other day. Someone's going to try to figure out who I am based on my shadow. God, I hope not. More fun facts about the Mark 23. Uh, basically, almost every single component in here... Ugh, why am I pointing like that? Almost every single component in here is, again, chrome-lined. So, they did it just, again, for corrosion resistance, ease of cleaning, wear cleaning. Did you go too hard? No, you're fine, man. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, they made everything, they made almost all of the internal components on this. I say almost all, because there's, there's a few that aren't, uh, there's a few that are not chrome-lined. But yeah, they made a lot of the parts out of a chrome-lined metal to aid in cleaning, corrosion resistance, salt water resistance because this gun is used by Navy SEALs, so they might be inf they might be infiltrating an area through uh, the sea. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this... Oh, man, this is... Yeah, this is going to be really hard to see. 
This is one of the things that's really impressive to me about the Mark 23. That spring right there next to the trigger bar. So this is the trigger bar, that spring right there. On any other gun, on any other gun, that spring would be just a piece of coiled wire. Or not coil, I'm sorry, why did I say coiled wire? It would just be a piece of like music wire spring. It would just be a completely normal spring. And yeah, on this gun, they were like, you know what? Now we're making it out of two strands of braided wire. We're not gonna make it out of one wire. We're gonna do two strands of braided wire for extra corrosion, or for extra, like, why do I keep saying corrosion resistance? Just to make it more durable. It's, it's ridiculous. They went that hard on this gun. Do I do this often on my streams? No, this is the first time I've done this. Clean. We must clean the gun. They did it so the spring itself would last longer, so it's got more lifting power behind it. I really wish you guys could actually see. Oh, hey, there we go. Come on, focus. See, I see the little spring. What that spring is doing is lifting up on this bar right here. See, the spring is lifting up on this bar to making sure that it pro properly engages. And yeah, there's there's absolutely no re. Well, no, there's a very there's very good reason to make it out of a coiled piece of two wires together. But it's just like they didn't they didn't need to do that. They didn't need to do that, and yet they did. You've also got completely ambidextrous safety, which is located on both sides of the gun. It still throws me off that the safety isn't the same lever on both sides. You'll notice that it's a completely different shape from here to here are two totally different shapes, which is really interesting. Um, decocker is located in front of the safety and it's classified as a silent decocker, but if you do it normally, it makes a bunch of noise. So basically what you're supposed to do when you're holding out of the gun is if you want it to be a quote unquote silent decocker, hold the hammer with your thumb and then actuate the decocker and then ease it forward. And that makes it, uh, that makes it actually quiet. Um, yeah, this gun, this gun absolutely fucks. I love this gun. There are so many other guns. If you want a 45 caliber handgun, if you want a 45 caliber handgun that you, that you can run a suppressor on, there are so many other guns that you could get that will be cheaper, they'll work very well, they'll be incredibly good firearms. And some of them will actually conceivably be better uh, because you could put a red dot on it. Or alternatively, you can actually put a flashlight on the front of it without having to spend $200 on an adapter to mount a flashlight to the gun. Like, wh why, why can't I put a light on this gun without like a freaking $200 adapter? Anyway, anyway. There's so many other guns that you could get you get Glock 21, you get the FNX 45 Tactical. That would be a really good one. But if you specific, if you, if you played Metal Gear Solid in 1998 and you had to have a Mark 23 SOCOM because of that game, then this is really the only one that you can get. You have a structured settlement and you need cash now. Call JG Wentworth 877 cash now. Call now. 
Do I put TW25 in here or do I put... Uh, do I put white lithium grease in it? I think we'll go with TW25. Do I like Slip 2000? I'm not like a huge fan of it. It's all right. Emote only chat. A beep boop. Oh guys, you know what I just thought of? I thought of a reason why. I thought of a reason why the Mark 20 or brrr, the Mark 23. Spokes Bunny gonna come out and pie Zach in the face like he's Elmer Fudd. <laughs> That'd be funny. I thought of a reason why the USP is no good. I actually thought of one. Because Masato uses one in Evangelion and Masato is the villain. To be fair, I think she only uses it in like one scene, and it's the one right before she dies, so. Spoilers, I guess. If you've never watched Neon Genesis Evangelion. I'm not a huge fan of Neon Genesis Evangelion. No, I will not elaborate. I just don't like it very much. And then we use this thing like it's a palette brush and we're painting. Sorry, palette knife. It would be palette knife. Also, I had to start wearing gloves when I was cleaning guns because one, it takes too long to get all the oil and carbon and shit off my hands. And this is easier. And two, because I didn't want to repeat that weird thing happening with my leg. Because that wouldn't have been fun. I don't want that to happen again. Oh, goodness. I completely forgot to clean this thing off. Look at the look at the copper buildup on there. That is crazy. Here, we'll just do this. I wear gloves so my leg is safe. You'd want to keep your leg too. Understandable. Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. Really appreciate it, man. Get in there. Great. 
You know, maybe I might put white lithium grease on this later. That might be better. Looks pretty good though. Great. Mark 23 SOCOM. I'm taking this tape off of, off of the light. I put it on there just kind of to see if, ow, if I would like it. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. Here's the thing, is it gonna come off properly though? Oh yeah, it comes off just fine. Cool. Get rid of that. Well, it came off just fine for except for that. <sighs> Honk! Thank you, Goose. Um, in case you were wondering, the reason the tape was on the front of it is because for some reason Streamlight puts a silver band around their the end of their flashlights, and I don't like it. Oh I don't goodness, like that that's so many on there. gifted subscriptions. You must really hate money. Oh my god, thank you so much for 10 gifted subscriptions, a uh, Diabalos. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. I don't like that they do that, and I wish they wouldn't. I had tried covering it up with, uh with black sharpie as you can see there, but it just kind of wears off. Anyway, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subscriptions, a uh, Diabalos. Mark 23 SOCOM, clean. Oh, I didn't put the... Maybe black electrical tape. I had black electrical tape, but it got real gross. Thank you very much, Private Pounder, for the 10 gifted subs. God damn. <laughs> thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. I really do. Ten fucking subs, holy shit. Alright. I think we got time to clean one more gun, and then I probably need to start getting ready for bed because I'm lazy and sleepy. Because I'm a sleepy boy! I'm a sleepy boy who has to sleep all the time. Look at this thing. Isn't Twitch anal about guns being on stream? As far as I know, it isn't. I've seen plenty of other people stream guns. They're more, uh... They're more anal retentive about, um... I don't know. Other stuff? I love this gun. This is unironically my favorite gun that I own. Vast majority of video game music is allowed on Twitch without fear of DMCA. Even Nintendo has said that streamers are allowed to use their music in streams and videos. Yeah, but how long, how long until they change their mind on that? Ow! Ow! <laughs> trying to put my gloves on and I just kept snapping the glove against the palm of my hand. Ugh. ATF sees forward grip on a pistol? No, it's fine, it's fine. Um, this is actually registered as an SBR. And it has a stock. See? But this is registered as a short barrel rifle. Thank you very much for the bits, Sharp Teeth. Um, yep, this is registered as a rifle. Or a short barrel rifle, not a pistol. Because it has a stock, so therefore it rifle. Do I have the matching suppressor? I don't know. I don't know. I think I probably have the matching suppressor for it. Wait, hang on, I probably can't do that. There we go. I think I probably have the matching suppressor for it.
I'm just a little weird about putting the suppressor on on there because when I put this uh, when I put this video on YouTube, YouTube might uh, might get mad if you can see the thing be put on there. They get weird about that. And I wish they didn't, but you know, whatever, I guess. Get, get out of there. Get. You know, I really do like this B&T. Uh, thank you very much, Space Toast. Feel you should know I modified a Frischer Development FD-917 suppressor onto an HK USP-45 and Fallout 4. It is atrocious. That sounds atrocious. But I mean, it's your game, man. You do what you want. Oh, shit. How'd that happen? Look at that. The spring got somehow... But there we go. Actually, you know, it's not a bad idea. Maybe I should just... Hang on. I hate taking these mags apart. They suck. I love this gun. But this gun's mags are kind of big poopy. Hey, there we go. Woo! Surprising magazine. Doing. All right. So, a couple things about this. Let's see. What did some people just say? How is the trigger? The trigger is not bad. That is the one complaint you will hear from a bunch of people about this gun. Anytime. God damn, Beethoven. Stop being so fucking loud. Beethoven, I'm turning you down. Jesus. Great. Did I clean the mags on my previous ones? A little bit. I cleaned this one because I shot it suppressed, so it's real gross inside. Okay, so. Some of the complaints you'll see about the B&T TP9. In a bit, can you blame him? He was deaf. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Um... Whenever you watch videos about this, you'll see people, you'll see people complain about the mag, or about the, uh, about the trigger on this gun. Being like, oh, this trigger's so bad, it gave me mega cancer, and it killed my parents, and it, it, it made the ATF come to my house and kill my dog. And it's like, the trigger is really not that bad. It really, really isn't. Um... Everyone likes to play up how bad the trigger is on this thing, but like, my guy, just shoot any bull- This thing's trigger is infinitely better than any bullpup that currently exists. Well, no, that's- that's not entirely true. This thing's trigger is better than most bullpups. Um... And just, maybe, maybe... Try... Uh... Not being such a little bitch. The trigger really is not that bad. It just don't be a trigger snob. That's pretty much it. Is this the gun? Uh, the TMP from Resident Evil 4 is based on this one or something else. The TMP from Resident Evil 4 is based on a couple different things. Well, no, it's... The TMP from Resident Evil 4 is based on the Steyr TMP, as the name implies, right? Uh, however, in the original Resident Evil 4, Krauser, at one point, uses a... B and T MP9, which is the full auto version of this. This one is the semi-auto version. Krauser uses the B and T MP9, which is interesting because literally, I want to say it was that year. No, it wasn't that year. It was uh, maybe the year 2000. Um, I forget what year it was exactly. I'd have to look it up to remember. Anyway. The original version of this gun is the Steyr TMP, and basically, Steyr had expressed that they were no longer interested in producing this gun. Um... B&T bought basically all the tooling and the rights to manufacture this, and when B&T did that, they made a bunch of improvements to it. Same with the AUG, people just want to complain, you call it the Steyr Tax. You know, that's a good name for it. Any video about the Steyr AUG has the Steyr Tax in it, which is just the guy bitching about the trigger on the AUG. Anyway. Uh, 
Oh, you don't like the trigger on the Hellion? Dude, the Hellion has a really good trigger. For a bullpup, anyway. It's honestly, my opinion of triggers on bullpups is in order from, in order from, like, worst to best. Uh... Okay, see, now I can't put them in order. I don't think the Hellion's trigger is that bad. I think the Hellion's trigger is better than the X95 trigger. But the best... The best stock bullpup trigger on the civilian market is the Desert Tech MDR. The best aftermarket bullpup trigger on the market is the Geisley Longbow trigger for the X95. So... That's, that's my hot take slash opinion. Not trying to be contrarian, you just like the X95 trigger more. That's completely fair, man. I, I have no problem with the Hellion trigger. I will admit that all bullpups, all bullpups inherently have kind of squishy, not great triggers. But I, I think people give them, I think they get a really bad rap and people kind of beat on them for really no reason. Uh, completely unrelated. This is one of the things that I think is really funny about B&T and the TP9 is that this magazine is a 20 round magazine, but you will notice, you will notice that the magazine says 20, 25, and then 30 because they literally took a 30 round magazine and went and chopped it down with a buzz saw and then installed the floor plate higher up. So this is a 30 round magazine that they cut down to 20 rounds and then charge you more money because they chopped the bottom off of it. So what I was saying earlier, the two complaints that I hear about this gun more than any of the other complaints are, um, the trigger is not great, and the stock magazines are not great. I will agree on the stock magazine part. I'll agree on what people say about the stock magazines because these edges are, I don't know if, I don't know if this comes across on camera, but the, the feed lips of this magazine are like a freaking knife edge. And because they're just made out of plastic, if you drop them and they accidentally land on the feed lips, you know, like, like that, they can break. The stock magazines are a little brittle. So that, that is a legitimate complaint, I will say. However, however, you can get these magazines made by a Korean company called KCI, where they reinforce the feed lips with metal. They are no longer a knife edge, uh, and they're not nearly as brittle. These I've dropped these multiple times, and they seem to they seem to work incredibly well. And yeah, they are thirty rounders. For the sake of YouTube, this magazine holds one bullet, but um, you can get thirty rounders. What is, somebody asked, I know nothing about bullpups. Where did that question go? You said you like bullpups, I know nothing about guns. So what are the advantage, the benefits of having the magazine behind the trigger? The benefit of having the magazine behind the trigger is that it means you can get a rifle with a longer barrel. So if you have, I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use this as the example. If this is where your magazine is, and this is where the pistol grip is, and you have a 15 inch barrel, it sticks out that far. But now, if you put the magazine back here, and you have a 15 inch barrel, now it only sticks out to like here. So, the advantage of having a, um, having a, having a bullpup is that you get a longer rifle, you get a longer barrel, but you can make it a shorter package overall. That's the advantage of having a bullpup. Also, they look sick as fuck, and that's the thing that actually counts. Everything else, like how they function, uh, how they function, their abilities, uh, none of that shit matters. It's only, it's only how, how cool they look.
Here's another, here's another, I guess not really a complaint, but here's another complaint about this gun. It's just kind of finicky to take this thing apart. And now, never before seen on the internet, how to disassemble a TP9. No, I, I'm sure it's been seen several times. Yeah, bull pops, you get a shorter overall length without losing the ballistic ability of having a longer barrel. Because when you start going with shorter barrels, you start losing the ballistic ability. What do I think of Hera gear? Uh, I think in the right instance, Hera, Hera uh, like stocks and grips look really cool. Think Ian beat me to the punch? You know, I don't remember if Ian's done a video on the MP9. I know Garantham did a video on the MP9. I don't know if he disassembled it, because I can't remember. Um, and I don't remember if... Uh, I don't remember if Ian did a video on the MP9. Looks like a pain to clean. It is a little bit, yeah. Brass Fax has stuff on the TP9. Yep, I've seen Brass Fax stuff on the TP9. Oh, this needs to go in first. You have another subscriber. Thank you very much, Little Leet. Little Eat Two Mouse. For the one month subscription, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna be, right now there's a Hollow Sun on here. At some point in the near future, I'm getting a, um, uh, bleh, I'm getting an Aimpoint Acro P2 that's gonna go on there instead of the Hollow Sun. Not that I dislike the Hollow Sun, I just, it's the aesthetic of an Aimpoint Acro is gonna be really cool. <clears throat> Close, it's E2, e, little E-T-2 mouse. Ah, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry I missed your question. Uh, Marcus, you can ask your, ask your question again. I'm sorry I missed it earlier. How many firearms do I own right now? I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's over 20. I own over 20 firearms right now. Uh, what's my wife's opinion on guns? Is she as big into them as you are? Or does she just humor you when you talk about them? It's mostly just she humors me when I talk about them. To be completely honest, yeah. She kind of just humors me while I talk about guns. Um... She says she appreciates the depths of my knowledge, uh, but it's not her special interest. How do I not know how many guns you've got? Because I have really bad ADHD. Let me see. Let's let's see. Let's see if I can I can remember. Because here's the, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I, I start trying to remember how many guns I have, and then I legitimately forget that I own guns. When I was moving. When I was moving, I was packing up all my guns, and I realized that I own a Beretta Model 1934. And I forgot that I even owned one. Brave of me to clean my guns on my desk pad? That's what these microfiber cloths are for. I'm smart. Anyway, yeah, I was going through my... I was going through and, like, moving all of my guns over to my new place, and I realized that I own a Beretta Model 1934. And I had no idea. What are the gun laws in my state like? They're not bad. I mean, that's probably that's why I live here. 
Um, somebody had asked earlier what it's like getting a short barrel or getting NFA items in my state. So, they're pretty much, getting NFA items is pretty much the same no matter what state you live in. Um, we'll go with the, the this right here because, uh, because that's what's currently sitting in front of me. The way that I had to get this is when I bought this gun, it arrived fully assembled and minus the stock and the foregrip. I bought this gun as a pistol. So what I had to do when I bought it is I had to, um, I had to send the ATF a, what is called a form one, which is basically an intent to manufacture a short barreled firearm, or it's, it's an intent to manufacture a NFA item. So I had to send them a Form 1 along with a copy of my fingerprints and a passport photo and a $200 extortion fee and tell them, hey, I want to make this thing into a short-barreled rifle. Can I do that? The thing about doing a Form 1 is it does not take that long. For anything else, if you buy a suppressor from a store, you are going to wait upwards of a year for them to get back to you and say, yes, you are allowed to own that. Form 1s actually do not take that long. This was approved in 15 days. In 15 days, they said, yes, you can turn that into a short-barreled rifle. Once they told me I could, then I could just attach the foregrip, I could attach the stock, and then I'm fine. Suppressors are being approved much faster. Currently at my shop, we're at nine months to a year is even with e-filing, nine months to a year is how long they're taking. The thing with the thing about getting suppressors is um, it depends entirely on how many other people are doing it. So people will come in and they'll say, hey, I want to get a suppressor. And we tell them, great, well, right now we're looking at six months. And they go, oh, man, that takes way too long. So they don't do it. So then the wait time starts going down because nobody's getting suppressors because they don't want to wait six months. And then once the wait time has gotten low enough, people start buying suppressors because they hear, oh my God, the wait time is nothing. So then they come in and they start buying a bunch of suppressors. And then once they've bought all the suppressors or once they've started buying suppressors, the ATF now has to do more paperwork. So it starts taking longer and then it becomes, okay, well now the wait time is like a year. Yeah, it basically becomes an ammo panic. So then, now, now the F or the ATF is taking like, or I'm sorry, because you send it to the, you send it to the FBI, not the ATF. The tax stamp itself goes to the the NFA or the National Firearms Registry through the ATF, but the um, the people that do the background check is the FBI, which is really dumb because they could just literally be doing the background check through their normal system. But I digress. Anyway. So, because now it's taking a long time, because everybody's getting a suppressor. People stop buying suppressors because, oh, well, it's taking a year? That, that That's way too long of a wait. I don't want to wait a year. So they don't get suppressors. And then the wait starts coming down. Anyway, whatever. Will I ever get the 6.5 millimeter barrel in the future? If I could, I would consider it. So there is a thing for this gun that exists for a few of them that is called 6.5, uh, I think CBJ is the cartridge. It's basically it's nine millimeter necked down to a 6.5 millimeter cartridge. It seems really interesting. I'm really intrigued by it, but it also kind of just seems like nothing. I haven't heard anything about it aside from the reports from the company that made it. Which is a little fishy to me if nobody else is talking about it except for the company that made it. I'm intrigued by it. I would love to try I would love to try some of it out, but I uh, I already 
I do also already own a bunch of guns and weird calibers. So, who knows? Should sell a kidney so I can just barely afford one whole LWRC rifle. You know, I'm not actually a huge LWRC fan. They're all right, but like, if I'm gonna spend a, if I'm gonna spend stupid money on a gun, I'm gonna get an LMT. Or if I'm gonna spend stupid money on an AR-15, I'm gonna get a an LMT. Do I own a clone of an M16A1 and or an M16A2? I own a clone of an M16A4 and then an M4A1 Block 2 SOT Mod. Because it's basically the rifle that I wanted when I was in the military. You want a CMMG Descent? That's a good option. Any of CMMG's 9mm carbines are... Uh, or not 9 mil carbine, but any of CMMG's like pistol caliber carbines are pretty good. LMT or KAC? You know, honestly, I feel like Knight's Armament is a little overrated. They Don't get me wrong, Knight's builds really good stuff. But they're also incredibly expensive for... Uh, for what they are. LWRC rifles have a proprietary rail on the bottom of their handguards, which is super dumb. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't like it when companies put proprietary rail systems on their firearms. He said cleaning a gun that uses proprietary magazines and a proprietary suppressor. Clean off. Bolt. Ow! Dang it. All right, that's pretty much clean. How did I get invited to Donuts Range Day? I mean, I, I'm on the internet and I make YouTube videos and I talk about guns. That's, that's pretty much how that happened. He just contacted me on Twitter. All right, you guys, are you guys ready to see the really weird thing about how this barrel comes out of the barrel housing? This is weird. All right, you ready? You pinch this. Here, oh, I'm sorry, I goofed up. You pinch this together, and this comes out the top, and then the barrel comes out through the front. It's just... Anyway. What is that ribbing on the barrel? Those are the barrel lugs. It was goofy. So what this has is little barrel lugs. The interface with the barrel right there. And that's part of how the gun like locks and unlocks. You can see that there's also lugs on the bolt. So, well, I took the, I took the, here, I'll have to, I'll have to show you guys when I put it back together, because I gotta, I gotta keep cleaning it. When I put it back together, I will explain the, uh, the barrel lugs on there. If I could only drink one flavor of juice for the rest of my life, what would it be? Uh... Strawberry watermelon. That was surprisingly a lot easier to answer than I thought it was going to be.
I always thought I had a big ass barrel on my uh, Airsoft childhood TMP. That's actually just the barrel shroud that comes out of the front of it. Isn't that neat? Emote only chat, beep boop. And now we clean the barrel in silence. I actually need to drink water though, so I'm gonna mute myself for a second. I'm back. I'm back, everyone. Man, that is a lot of fucking carbon buildup. Jeez. That's probably not the song, actually. Look, okay, I, I just want I want you guys to appreciate. I want you guys to appreciate the sheer amount of machining work that went into making this. So, the widest part of this barrel is here, right? There we go. The widest part of this barrel is right here. So this is basically a piece of like bar stock that they had to. Thank you very much for the bits, Crasher. Hi back, I'm Patrick. No, this is Patrick. They had to take a piece of bar stock, machine it down to a little bit more than this diameter right here. Then they had to machine every single one of these lugs out, machine two things into there, machine a track path in there. Take like do And then they still had to threat then they still had to rifle the barrel. Also, it's polygonally uh, it's polygonally rifled. So it's just like the amount of work. The amount of work that went into making just this barrel is kind of absurd to me. It's very, very impressive, but also kind of silly. I like when stuff has a lot of, when I can tell stuff has a lot of work put into it. Specifically like with, with gun parts. When I can tell that something has been very, very carefully designed. That's really impressive to me. I like really good design work. And obviously really good machining work as well. That's one of the reasons I have so many just like small machined things. Because it's very impressive to me. Is this a Krusty Krab? No, this is Patrick! See, look at this. Normally that's really shiny, but that's like, that's all carbon buildup on there because I was shooting this thing suppressed. Careful. See, look at that. You can just see the carbon coming off of that. Come on, come on. So much freaking carbon buildup on this. That's ridiculous. Here. We need of uh, this one and this one and that should be good. That's not gonna work great. There we go. Oh, that worked way better. Yeah. 
usually I watch videos when I, uh, when I clean guns. Honk. Usually I watch videos when I clean guns. Um, I used to have saved on my computer a copy of the, uh, the movie The Island, directed by, uh, oh my god, what the hell is his name? Michael Bay. The movie sucks. It's a terrible movie, but I fucking love that movie for some weird reason. I don't know why. Anyway, when I was in college, I used to clean guns and watch that movie. I don't know why. Uh... I, man, why do I like that movie so much? It's not a good movie. It's really terrible. It's also just a straight-up rip-off of a 1970s movie called Parts, The Clonus Horror. Um, it's so much of a rip-off that the director of Parts, The Clonus Horror sued Michael Bay afterwards, and they settled out of court for an undisclo undisclosed amount. Fun over-the-top action is probably why. Yeah, also because um, uh, Ewan McGregor's in it. Is it Ewan McGregor? I think it's Ewan McGregor. I could be wrong. I'm sorry. And he's very handsome. And Scarlett Johansson. But I mean Ewan McGregor. I think I mean Evan McDonald. I'm pretty sure it's Ewan McGregor. Anyway, I would clean guns and watch that movie. Does Sean Bean die there too? Yeah, he does. What is this? The Oh yeah, it's the movie The Island. Sean Bean absolutely dies in it. Duncan is in it for like five minutes. I think you mean five seconds. He's barely you have in that another movie. subscriber. Thank you very much, the Lord Balkan. Uh, Gaddius, what is your question? I'm sorry, I completely missed it. I'm um, on the BNT website and they're selling guns without the foregrip. Is that sold separately? Yes, it is. The foregrip is sold separately. Do I have a least favorite gun? Um, My least favorite standard issue military firearm is the Mark 19. Uh, what is my least favorite civilian gun? Um, probably like the Honor Defense Honor Guard is probably like my least favorite civilian gun. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Does Mrs. Hazard share your passion on pew pews? Uh, she does not share my interest in firearms, but she does, um, she does like how interested it, I am in them. Um, anyway, somebody asked about the foregrip. Yeah, the foregrip. Just unscrews. You can see down in there. There's two holes. One of those is uh, one of those goes to a screw, which this just comes right off. So you pop that on there. Screw goes into it, and then this attaches through a screw right there. So if you buy one of these, it will not come with this or this. You have to attach those after you register it as an SBR. They used to have a rail on the front, and then they got enough people were like, "Yeah, can you just sell it to me without the rail so that I can put a vertical grip on there?" So they just started doing that. How often do I clean my guns? Generally, I, I actually probably overclean my guns. I clean them a lot. Um, I usually clean them almost every time I shoot them. So I honestly kind of, uh, I honestly kind of overclean them, to be completely honest. I probably don't need to clean them as much as I do, but I do. What is, uh, somebody asked what I don't like about the Mark 19. There's a lot of internal components on the Mark 19 that are very precise. There is a gigantic, it's probably like a, it's probably about this long, like a 13, 14 inch long 
metal bar that's on the inside of it that has a chrome lined uh, rib on there. And the metal bar that's in there is its entire purpose is to, when the bolt comes backwards, it feeds the round down the face of the bolt and prepares it to be chambered into the barrel. Um, that bar is very precisely made, which normally I would like. The problem is because when you disassemble the Mark 19, if you do not set that metal bar down the correct way, it'll fall over and the, just getting nicks in the, um, getting nicks in it can cause it to not function properly. Also the Mark 19 jams a lot. You can only use LSA in it. If you use any other type of lubricant, it will probably catch on fire. Uh, yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the Mark 19. The bolt is the size of a loaf of bread and it weighs like 10 pounds. That is no joke. The bolt, the bolt of the Mark 19 is the size of a loaf of bread and it weighs 10 pounds. I mean, it's a fully automatic grenade launcher, so... Do I like pigeons? Dude, I fucking love pigeons. Pigeons are great. Wonder if the Mark 47 is an improvement? It probably is. Never actually seen me stream a gun cleaning before? This is the first time I've done it. Rye or sourdough? I prefer sourdough bread. Yeah, you know what? I want to see if I can find this now. Hang on. Would I fight a pigeon? Wouldn't be much of a fight. A pigeon would kick my ass. Yeah, let me see if I can find an image for you. There we go. Here, we'll just go. That is the bolt to a Mark 19. It's got two gigantic springs coming out of the back of it. Um, yeah, it's got two gigantic springs coming out of the back of it. It's, like I said, the size of a freaking loaf of bread. It's huge. Room for the nut to turn. You got a lacing wire stuffed down on the inside of it. Uh, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of of this gun. God, why did I keep, why do I keep doing that? It does, it does actually, um, it does actually look like a gun from Warhammer 40k. That's, <laughs> that's accurate, actually. History. Damn it. There we go. Yeah, it does actually look like a Warhammer 40k gun. That's accurate. Which gun would give me the best chance against a pigeon? There is nothing, there is no mortal weapon that could prepare you for a fight against a pigeon. Maybe bread. If I had a gun that just dispensed bread on the ground, that would actually work. Do I have a least favorite fictional gun? Uh, the Pancor Jackhammer, because you guys won't shut up about it. <laughs> yeah, besides, you don't fight pigeons, you befriend the pigeons. Would I get a 45 long slide, an Uzi 9mm, or a phased plasma rifle in the 40 watt range? I would get the, uh... I would get the I would get the Uzi nine mm What are my thoughts behind the riser trend for optics and other attachments? I think it has its place. It makes sense. I have a um, I have a Sig MCX Spear LT, uh, and or yeah, the MCX Spear LT. Um, I have that one, and I have an optic on a riser on that. But it's, uh, it's not that tall of a riser. It's only a little bit higher than normal. So. 
Yeah, I think I think it, it, it makes sense. And honestly, it works really well on the 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 MCX Spear LT specifically. Um, I think when you start getting over like two inches in optic riser, then you're just kind of bridging on the the, the point of ridiculousness. Point one, yeah, point one nine three is fine. Anything over point one nine three is a bit much. Opinion on SIG as a whole? I like SIG's guns. SIG makes really nice firearms. I like the MCX Spear. Here is my advice for you if you are considering SIG firearms. Never buy a first generation SIG firearm. First generation is, or anything after the first generation is fine. SIG really likes making consumers their beta testers, which kind of rubs me the wrong way. They'll do testing for a gun and release it and then hope that the civilians that bought the gun kind of figure out what else is wrong with it. And that really irks me. Opinion on the Keltec KSG. It's a cool shotgun. Honestly, I think the Keltec KSG. Nor so Keltec is filled with a bunch of crackheads that make some of the most fucking insane guns ever. I shouldn't say crackheads, I'm sorry. They do. <sighs> Keltec is filled with a bunch of guys that are doing a bunch of cocaine. I shouldn't have said crackheads, I should have said cocaine. I'm deeply sorry for that. They're filled with a bunch of cokeheads that make some fucking insane firearms designs. Like, the KSG is so bonkers, but it's so cool. And then the fact that they took the KSG and made a 25 round version is nuts. Like, wh why? Why would you do that? But they did. I think the KSG is really cool, and honestly, I think the KSG is one of their, one of the few designs they've made that actually makes sense. Like, that's a really, that's the first, I do honestly believe that the kel KSG is the first real innovation to pump action shotguns in over a hundred years. Like, they, they made a, they made a really cool modification that uh, nobody else had really thought of face down in coke and then sits up double mag shotgun yeah pretty much Is that? Oh, there's still a bunch of buildup in there. What are we cleaning? A B and T TP9. But yeah, I really. Um, Keltec KSG is a really neat gun. I think it's really interesting. Nice duck. Thank you. Look, he does this. He lights up. Yeah, Keltec KSG is cool. I don't know why I keep saying that. I really like it. Ow. You like the fox thing on the side? That's a little tiny felted tanuki. Goddamn classical music. Hey. There you go. 
Yeah, it's a little tiny tanuki and it's made of felt. Do I clean my guns after every range use or when they start jamming? I, um, I clean them after every range use. Basically. I might want to check the duck. I'm pretty sure I, uh, pretty sure I saw a quack in the bill. Ooh, goodness, I should look into that. Classical music while John Moses Browning from Fort Polk cleans his guns. I would, I would not say that I'm that I'm John Moses Browning. I've never designed a firearm. Which shotgun am I thinking of that has the dual mags like the KSG, but the tubes are slotted, vented? I'm not sure. There's another shotgun that has dual magazine tubes like that that I think is the. I think is the, um, uh, is it the UTS-12? I think it's the UTS-12. I'm not a huge fan of the UTS-12. The only, there's another one that's similar to that that I really do not like. Um, the main difference being that it has two barrels on it, and I really don't like that one. It's every single time I've handled one, it feels clunky, and I swear to God, I swear to God, I've handled two of them. Both times I've fucking handled them, parts have fallen off of it. DP-12, that's it. I fucking hate the DP-12. That thing just feels like absolute garbage to me. I do not like that gun. Oh, it's the UTAS, UTS-15? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that looks pretty clean to me now. I can still see a little bit of buildup on there. But, like, whatever. Barrel is sometimes just such a pain in the ass to clean on this thing. Is the CC P10C any good? Yeah, I like the P10C. Make sure I'm checking which classical music tracks I'm listening to. Some recent tracks will get DMCA'd. Well, fuck. Ah, the joys of being a content creator and trying to... Trying to find background You have music. another subscriber. Thank you very much, Land of the Dross, for subscribing. What's my favorite sword? I'm going to go with the weeb option and say a katana. But I am still partial to the uh, Zweihander or a bastard sword. Those are both really cool. And honestly, let me tell you something. I have kind of a thing for just small shanks. I like shanks. I don't know why I wish I could tell you. So I guess daggers, but like, you know, I like, I like shanks. I've got a lot of them. Do I have any meme AR builds? Uh, I have an upper that's a carry handle, but it has a free float rail on it because I thought it would be funny. Um, and now I don't use it for anything and I'm probably going to sell it. We're talking stiletto shank or wide short blade? Uh, we're talking like this. Hang on. <clears throat> this thing. That's what I mean by shanks. I like shanks. See? It's just literally an ice pick with edges on it. It doesn't actually even have edges. It's, it's like, that's an edge, but it's not even freaking sharp. Like, this is sharp. That is not sharp. I like shanks. Tiny stabby thing. It's It really is big trash panda energy. And then I have another one. I have another one that's on my battle belt that has a ring on it. It's literally the exact same one. It just has a ring on there. <clears throat> 
Show them the spider co. Oh yeah. That's my everyday carry knife. I like this knife. This is a really, really good knife. This is the Spyderco Shaman, and it is my favorite knife I've ever owned. I think last year it was actually my, like, it was in my, um, I think last year it was in my, like, best of the year. I really like this one. What do I think about Benchmade? Benchmade makes really good knives. Basically, Benchmade, Spyderco, they're both really good. Um, there's not really that many, like, bad knife companies. It's just, like, you know, it just depends on what you get. Is there a process? Ooh, wait, where'd that question go? You know, I thought, is there a process how guns are properly sold? Do you legally need to go to a gun store and mess with registration and all that? Uh, yeah. Yep. You have to go in the United States if you go to a gun store and buy a gun. You have to do a bunch of paperwork. They got to run a background check. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a, a whole process for... For getting a, oh specifically for private sales yeah there is still stuff you have to do for private sales and it depends on where you are like what state you're in and uh, what the firearm is that you're transferring from one person to another. You don't have to specifically go to a gun store, but there is still a process that you have to go through. Also, look how complicated this trigger mechanism is. Look at this. Look at this shit. Right. Look at look at all these little moving parts that go in there. That's the hammer. It's very complicated. Oh, not Germany, Switzerland. It's Swiss. Swiss, not German. But close, though. The original one that this is based off of is the Steyr TMP. This one is the TP9, which is made by Brueger and Tomet. Um, but yeah, still, it's still pretty much the same thing. It was very complicated. How does the trigger feel? It feels okay. It's like I said earlier, the one complaint you'll hear from a bunch of people about this gun is that the trigger is like the worst thing ever. And it really is not that bad. Everyone... Everyone talks about how terrible this trigger is, but honestly, it's not that bad of a trigger. What's the shots per second on this? I am not sure. It's semi-auto, so as fast as you can fire it. Yep, it is full semi-auto. That was a joke. Do I have a Swiss army knife? I do have a Swiss army knife. It's with a bunch of my other, uh, it's with a bunch of my other knives. I'd have to go find it. <clears throat> do I own any full auto guns? I do not own any fully automatic guns. I don't have the money for that. Basically, if you want to own a fully automatic gun, the cheapest ones are like $6,000.
Oh. There we go. Have I kept any military gear from my time in the military? I kept quite a few things from my time in the military. I still have my helmet. Um, I have my dress uniform, which I don't fit into anymore because I'm fat. Uh, um, I think I still have some of my... Uh, I, I still have a whoopee. Um, ooh. I kept uh, a couple of my normal uniforms. So I did keep some of my stuff. All right, that is pretty much good. I think we can start putting it back together now. Um, so somebody had asked earlier what these little things how did that how did I miss that jeez somebody had asked earlier what these little things on the barrel were um, and these are the locking loves locking lugs so put the barrel back together I'll probably have to lubricate that but we'll do that in just a second eh. Do I still have my grandpa's blanket? I do still have that. Okay. So that locks in there, and that just pivots forward and backwards. The bolt goes on this. So what this gun uses is what's called a rotating barrel locking mechanism, as opposed to like an AR-15, which uses a rotating bolt, or um, uh, there's a lot of guns that use like a rotating bolt. This one uses a rotating barrel. Basically, the way this works is when the gun fires, the barrel comes, barrel and bolt both come backwards. And then as the barrel comes backwards, you can see it unlocks. And then that's what those grooves are. Those grooves are what help make sure that the bolt stays locked into the barrel and vice versa. And it kind of just helps hold everything together while it's, while it's cycling. See? Clunk, 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 clunk. Isn't that neat? But now I have to lubricate this. So I usually put lubrication on the on this spot. Because this is what indexes on the inside of there. What's the difference between the MP9 and TP9? Uh, the only difference is that the MP9 is fully automatic. The TP9 is not. And then we're just going to put down there. Don't really need to lubricate every single one of these, but I do anyway. Oh. I always forget stuff. Well, that's too much. Eh, whatever. No such thing as too much lubrication. Why are you playing this song? What the fuck? I don't want that song. Hey! What did I just fucking say? 
That's better. Yeah, there we go. I want vampire music. Fuck you. Fuck you, mailage music. I want vampire music. We've got to escape this mansion. This vampire mansion! Great. Huh. We're just gonna... There we go. That's better. Any reason why we don't see that many guns with rotating barrels? Uh, because it is more complex. It means that there's a lot more surfaces that you have to machine to more specific tolerances. Um, so like the, the Beretta PX4, the Beretta PX4 uses a rotating barrel and that one's kind of an anomaly because there's really not that many pistols, like handguns, that use a rotating barrel. But yeah, it means that you know you now have more surfaces that you have to machine into the into the firearm. Great. Clunk. Will I shoot you if you recognize me in public? No. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Nice. Emote only chat. Beep boop. <laughs> I know how much you guys love emote only chat. Have I ever been recognized in public before? I have actually been recognized in public a couple times. It's always really weird when it happens, too. I don't know how to feel about it. It it does it does legitimately kind of weird me out a little bit when people recognize me in public. I probably shouldn't let it, but it does. Usually, I, I, people have always been nice. I haven't had like a like a bad experience yet. You have but... another subscriber. This just kind of weirds me out a little bit. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, by the way, Crasher, thank you very much for the bits. And oh, thank you, Wreck-It Carl, for the three-month subscription. I really appreciate it, man. Ooh, three months in advance. Damn, man. Thank you very much. That and I kind of forgot to do this. Let's. Yeah, this this thing is. BNT TP9 is legitimately my favorite gun that I own. If I had to get rid of every single gun that I owned, with the exception of one, this would be the one that I kept.
I like this gun that much. That feels a little bit better. Great. That feels good. Feels like it's working. Probably can give that just like a little bit of a wipe down in there. See, I should have had this song played when I brought the playing when I brought the Mark 23 out. That would have been smart. It's always funny to me when I hear this song and it's not the version from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Like, nobody else is going to play it except for that version. Gun cl cleaning complete. Achievement reached. <laughs> 